Hello. We're playing Seas of Scred because I got given a copy of this game by the developer and I was like, all right, sure. And it ended up actually being pretty fun, so I might as well make a video out of it. This is a game pretty much about getting points. That's generally the gist of it. But it also has like story sort of and other stuff sort of. Let's just get started. There are several game modes available. Normal, Seed Zero and Daily. I'm going to be playing on Seed Zero because I think it's... A uh, slightly nicer way of showing up the game. Usually, if you play on normal, you'll just get a randomly generated level, but on seed zero, we get a predetermined level that's actually quite friendly. When we click on start game, we can choose any of these three ships. The standard ship, which is nice and like reasonably fast and carry a certain amount of stuff and doesn't have a bonus. The heavy ship, which is really slow, but it can carry twice as much as the standard ship, and the harpoon, which can carry as much as the standard ship and starts off with a scanner and it's faster. And we're going to start off with the harpoon. There's one small downside to the harpoon, but I'll get to that in just a second. Let's get started. Welcome to the Seas of Scred. Guide Ruby through the treacherous trench as she attempts to acquire enough credits to purchase a new research vessel, the Unsinkable 2. Don't ask about the first one. Acquire minerals like ninthronium and pearls and take them to a refinery. Don't run out of air. Use swift mode to cover ground and tactical mode for tight spaces. Default keys. Actually, it's K, but don't worry. Like, J is sort of like that button anyway. You have two tech slots. Different tech goes in different slots. Work out the best combination in a ship. Blah, 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 blah. There will be quite a lot of hazards. We're sorry about that. Actually, no, we're not. We're not sorry at all. And here's the game. And that's actually sort of a lie. This is really the game. Because we chose the harpoon, we start off with an item called the scanner, which lets us zoom out and see a little bit more. And as long as we're in the top over here, we are not going to run out of oxygen. If we run out of oxygen, we die. If we touch a wall, we die. And before I go on, I should mention any music you hear during this video is going to be added in post editing stuff because this game doesn't actually have any music at all. And it's rather quiet because of it. But there you go. Like the thing said, you can switch between tactical mode, which lets you just sort of uh, go all over the place like this. You'll just move one square whenever you touch a button. But you can also go into swift mode, which is a little bit different. There's a whole bunch of shops here, but I'll get into that in a second. Swift mode, if you press up, you'll get a little flame and you'll basically go in that direction with the speed of as many times you basically press up or down with a maximum speed of eight with this ship because we are on the harpoon now because we are on the harpoon our air will run out a little bit quicker than on basically every other ship as you can see to the left over there and there's this little dude over here i believe his name is a blobfish if we touch him we lose a whole bunch of oxygen pretty quickly and that's kind of bad, so we kind of want to avoid these guys for now there's also a little yellow guy over here called Grabbins. If we touch him, we just die, so we're not going to do that right now. We're just going to collect the knife of and get as much of that as possible. One of the reasons why I chose this particular seed rather than just a randomly generated one is because the price of those Nyko is random it's random when you choose or when you just do normal mode but in this seat it's 200 credits and 200 credits is actually like a ludicrous amount for these things you can get anywhere between like 20 and 200 for these things and if you get a seat with 20 it just takes ages to get any money and that's kind of annoying but we sold all of our nintrum and we can use that to buy various goods over here we can buy a laser, a mine layer, and a scanner. Laser and mine layer are both weapons which you can use to fight the enemies, but we can also use it to basically make roads, because after a while you get to areas where there's just a whole bunch of mines and you can't do anything anymore, and that's kind of sad. We can buy air canisters, batteries, and mines. The batteries and mines are required for the laser and the mine layer, respectively. And air canisters keep you alive a little bit longer if you run out of oxygen. But they take up space to your cargo to the left, so that's kind of bad right now. Over here we can buy a research vessel for 10,000 credits, a research model, and a bio-acquirer. And we're going to buy the bio-acquirer because it allows us to pick up friends and sell them over here for a predetermined amount of money. Like, this is actually not random. The crabbins are always 200 credits. The blobfish are always 10 credits. And... Then over here we have a teleported ticket which will end the game. Now sort of the point of the game is to buy a research vessel for 10,000 credits and then buy a teleported ticket 
to go home again, basically. That's pretty much the story of the game. You need to get a research vessel and then teleport back into your home world or whatever. And we're just gonna do that. Now the blobfish, normally they're annoying, but because we bought the bio acquirer, we can actually just pick them up and sell them. They're still kind of annoying right now because they're only worth 10 credits, which is the least of anything ever, basically. But because we bought the bio acquirer, we can pick up crabins, we can pick up blobfish and all that good stuff. But there's a couple of arrow things over here, which if you touch them, you just go in that direction for one square. There's also these like squiggly things. I believe the manual, because this game has a manual, calls them wild currents. I just call them like wiggles of death because the moment you touch them, you sort of get flung somewhere and it can just teleport you into a wall and you'll just instantly die. But for now, we're just going to focus on selling these remaining things and we're just going to go back down again. Now, I mentioned earlier the swift mode and tactical mode. If you switch to, to tactical mode, you just instantly stop moving. However, if you then switch back to swift mode, you'll just keep going at the speed you were going previously. So that's one thing to keep in mind when you're just wiggling around in tactical mode and then going back again. Also, these things contains, uh, contain oxygen, but they don't actually refill, which is why I'm not picking up any of these. And we're just going to try and focus on getting a whole bunch of these. Swift mode is pretty much the best way of moving down and up because... You're just going really fast, especially with this ship. The only downside is if you're moving fast, there's a very good chance you, you're going to die. But since you can switch to tactical mode with just one press of the K button and not the J button, you can quite easily just stop yourself from flinging into a wall. But it does take some practice. Kind of one of the reasons why I started recording this game is because I, I played it for a while and I just kept dying and I got annoyed <laughs> i got really annoyed by the game and when that happens i either just stop playing the game or i get really obsessed with it and just try and beat it somehow some way and with this game i just kept playing it until i at least got like remotely decent at it and here we are now now there's a couple of air bubbles over here which we can take to get a little bit of extra oxygen back and again there are those like air stations as well but i'm not going to focus on those right now because when we get back to the top over here and get back to the shops we should have enough credits after we sell all of our things to buy a research vessel and the research vessel is kind of nice the research vessel regardless of which ship you start with it's always going to be the same it's going to look like this it can carry that amount of things and it has a maximum speed of six rather than eight but it's better than the heavy ship in, in sort of in terms of speed it has a lot of oxygen so we don't really have oxygen problems anymore like we did with the harpoon and we have a slightly more like cargo space as well which is kind of nice because that way we can pick up a whole bunch more stuff we can consider maybe buying a laser when you buy the research vessel you immediately get a um, science module which I think has a different name in the shop but there you go the science module what it does is when you beat the game or you die whichever like uh, if you um basically get to the score screen it gives you a multiplier for the like deepest you've been in the game like uh, it to the left there's like a depth meter and the highest number of that gets like recorded and they use that number to calculate your score in the end and if you have the science module you will basically get like a 40 times multiplier on your depth score and that's kind of nice obviously but the only problem is it takes up the same slot as your mine layer and your laser. So if we buy one of those right now, we will immediately lose it. And we would have to rebuy it again if we decide to teleport out of this place. And you are going to need a laser or a mine layer. I personally prefer the laser. But after a while, you're just going to get to places where there's just a whole bunch of mines or whatever. And they're just blocking the road entirely. Sometimes you're going to get the, the wiggles of death in the way. And you're gonna need to, you need some way to get rid of those. And for as far as I can tell, the only way is to just either shoot them or mine them. And the mines, like, they destroy, like, a sort of Bomberman grid. They just, uh, like, hit the square they're on and then one square next to them in every direction. And the laser just shoots in whatever direction you shoot it in until it hits a wall. <laughs> Which is quite powerful. It's really quite strong indeed. Because sometimes you'll just have a whole bunch of mines right next to each other. And you can just get rid of the whole layer of mines that is just blocking your way. 
sometimes you'll end up with like the wiggles of death being in the way but they're all like above each other so you can just get rid of them very quickly that way and I just personally prefer the laser because of that it like the mine layer doesn't really seem to have much benefit also a mine costs like 500 credits and the laser costs like 40 bat like 40 per battery or something and it's like a per like a one use thing as well at least like the ammo you buy. So as you can see, it's a little bit darker now. We've gone a little bit deeper and the color of the level has changed a bit. There's this green thing over here, which is spawning like the blobfish, which is kind of annoying because they're, they're just going to get in the way more and more. And there's also these like red things, diamond, whatever. They're mines. If you touch them, you die because everything in this game is out to kill you. And it's not very pleasant, but we're just doing our best to try and collect as much stuff as possible using our tactical thing as much as possible to try and survive this as much as possible as well. And all in all, just having a pretty good time. Now, really, my only complaints about this game is the lack of music and the backtracking because the lack of music, it, it does make it kind of eerie. It's really quite quiet. And the only sounds you really hear are beeps and boops. So, and you can turn those off as well. But obviously that doesn't mean you can just use your own music, which, you know, it's not bad. But I wouldn't have minded if there was just some, like, royalty-free music or something like that. Just, just anything. Because right now it's pretty silent. However, it does sort of fit with the graphical art style at the same time. So it's... I don't really know. I don't really know what a good choice would have been. But... I, I just like music. Let's be, I just, that's really my main thing. I just really enjoy music from video games, and that's why I want more of it. But I like the game works perfectly fine if you're just playing your own music. For the for this purpose of the video, I'm just playing without music, and I'll just edit it in later because, you know, that's just how videos are made. Pearls are worth more than the night pretty much every time. I think it seems to be just pretty much guaranteed that they're worth more, which is kind of nice. And I'm actually going to buy a laser and a couple of batteries. Just going to buy three batteries. And as you can see, they're currently taking up space in my cargo hold. So that, like, that's kind of the downside of using the laser. But simultaneously, we can use it to get rid of things. It actually removes a block from the wall as well. And I don't actually know what the limitations of that are. I don't know if there's like a way you can literally just dig a tunnel if you just have enough credits because I've never actually tried doing that. But doing that sounds kind of boring and horrible. So I don't know if it actually leads anywhere. I don't know if there's any benefit to doing it, but I think it is a thing you could do and it would sort of work out maybe. So, you know, that's the thing you could try and do that is this is the thing. I personally am not going to do it because I have better things to do, but you know, it's worth a shot at some point if you are the owner of this game. So I'm going to use this laser on this thing because that thing is spawning those blobfish or whatever they were called. And now they won't because now the thing's gone. And now we won't really have too much of a problem with them. Although, once you get the bio acquirer, uh, you don't actually lose oxygen when you touch these guys. Which is kind of nice. It's also kind of weird because even when your like, cargo hold is full... They'd stop just damaging you at all. You can just go through them entirely, which seems kind of strange to me, but all right. Not going to question it and just going to move on, as I always say. And we are just going to try to get a little bit more money. And then we should be able to leave this place. And we're just going to be very happy about that. I think this might actually be enough to beat the game. I'm just going to go like a little bit deeper just to see if like the last different color is like close-ish. That would be neat. That would be cool. Because, like, the deeper you go, you get to, like, different colors terrain. But I think there's only, like, three different colors. One is, like, slightly darker blue. And it would be cool if I could just show that one off. I'm just going to get rid of that mine over there with my laser. And we are going to be running low. Look, there's the last color over there. And Kraven's is just hanging out over here on this thing. I'm actually just going to shoot it. And Kraven falls down because our cargo hold is full. But as you can see, it didn't kill us. Also, the camera like points to whichever direction you were going in swift mode. So if you were going up, then the camera is going to be pointing mostly up as well. And I'm just going to get some oxygen over here. 
And if you're going down, the camera is mostly going to be pointing down, which is kind of an important thing for tactical view as well, because if you're in tactical mode, there's just a good chance you just won't be able to see pretty much anything if you're going, I guess, in the wrong direction. So it's something you need to keep in mind. Otherwise, you're just going to have a bad time and that will be just rather unfortunate. I don't want to be having an unfortunate time for no real apparent reason. Just going to get these oxygen things because we should be getting pretty close to effectively beating the game. I wouldn't really call it beating the game, I suppose. It's just like, um, because in the end, the game is about getting score. If you ask me, especially when you're doing like the daily challenge where um, it just has like a seed. I guess it probably just bases it on the date or something. And you can try it at once. And once you lose, you uh, or once you beat the game or whatever, once you just get a final score once, you won't be able to play the daily challenge again. I'm guessing it's like just a registry thing, which you could probably cheat if you really wanted to. But the game doesn't have like leaderboards. It actually has like a button where you can tweet your score, which I thought was pretty cute. And is also a little bit nicer in on the like indie front because it wouldn't like you won't have to like have a server running for the leaderboards forever, which you know it saves money, and that's kind of what we're trying to do at all points in our lives. Plus, this game like the tweet function works just as well. And if you're just playing it with like a bunch of friends, then you can very easily see who has the highest score that day, so it works out. So I'm just going to sell these final things, just going to sell a whole bunch of pearls. And we have 16,000 credits, so we can buy a teleporter ticket. And that's that. Here is the final score screen. Our score is basically horrible uh, <laughs> because we just didn't do very well. We don't get a sc stores bonus. I'm not actually sure why. That might actually be because we're playing on seed zero, because I think usually you do get a store bonus. But maybe that's where we're getting kind of a low score. But I've had like a... I've done like the same thing on a randomly generated seed and I have like 60,000 points. And obviously if you go deeper, then you'll get a higher score as well. But that's that. There's also a couple of graphical options which you can change. You can change the sprite mod. Right now we're just on default because I like it. But there's also C64 and Mana Green and Chasm in RGB. I'll just show it up real quick over here. And you kind of have an idea what it looks like when you switch between the various graphical settings. And it's kind of neat that it does that. I personally quite like the Chasm one. But, you know, it's kind of personal preference. And there's also one time I saw a robot in a wall, but I touched it and then I died. Because if you touch walls in this game, you die. So I don't actually know what that does. It might just do nothing. It might just be a little thing that's just there for funsies. But I'm not 100% sure. And you can also switch between widescreen and non widescreen if you turn off widescreen you basically won't have the little overlay that you're seeing right now the hammer space game system thing but i kind of liked it plus it gives it a more friendly resolution to record them so there's that i think right now it's playing on 720p which you know that's fine for this game but that's that that seas of scred it's pretty fun it's like three dollars or something on itch.io and there'll be a link in the description if you wish to play this game as well I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope to see you guys next time. Bye-bye.